Okay, in this video we're going to be going over how to read in data specifically from HTML tables that you might find on the web and database connections. Now for HTML tables I have an actual example that we're going to walk through that you can follow along with. As for database connections I don't have an actual database set up to demonstrate but I'm hoping that I can show you the, the concept and the structure that it follows to connect to a database and pull values from it and hopefully that'll, that'll get you off to a good start. So let's start with read HTML tables. So the first thing we want to do is question mark read HTML table to know what we're going to be doing. Get the documentation up so that we can use it for later reference. So as we can see read HTML function accepts the following parameters and the first one is doc meaning the document or the HTML document where the table is located. So we're going to check out some MBA stats um, online. So let's go ahead and check those out. So here at this web page, as you can see, there's lots going on up here, but here is an HTML table. And we want to pull this data, but there seems to be no download option and so the best thing we can do right now is to basically just read it straight from the web read it from the HTML table so let's go ahead and look at how we're gonna do that so I'm gonna create a variable called my URL and save that URL to the page that has the table on it into that variable now I'm gonna create a variable called MBA data and I'm gonna use a function called read HTML table, the one that we're looking at right up here. I'm going to pass it my URL um, and I'm going to specify which table, which HTML table I want. So this, you can see this argument down here. It says an integer vector identifying which tables to return within the document. So what that means is that if there were more than one table on this page, then we could easily say if this was the first one and then there is a break in the page and there is a second one down here then we could simply say which equals to I want the second HTML table on there but we're going for the first one since there's only one on there right now so let's go ahead and run that and let's use head to look at the first 10 records and it looks like it's working out pretty well so far um, we have the players here, we have the team, and all the stats. But let's go ahead and look at the structure see what we learn. Okay, this should be a red flag to us, seeing that it converted everything to a factor variable. And part of that is because we just didn't supply enough information to read HTML table, the function, and it doesn't really know how to handle all of this data, so it turned it all into factors. And that's not necessarily what we want to do. So what you have to do, we're going to use read HTML table again, but we're going to use additional parameters to be more specific so it knows how to handle the data that it's reading in. So you saw this before, read HTML table, my URL, which table you want the first one. And now these other parameters are, are more simple than they seem. Strings as factors. So this, we want to set this to false because that's one of the reasons it is setting, it is the reason that it's setting all of these things to factors because it thinks all of them are strings since it's coming from an HTML table, an HTML page as well. So we're going to set that to false and we're going to use a parameter called column classes, call classes, and that allows you to specify um, what type, what class whether it's factor or numeric or character, um, whatever it may be, you're going to define which class each column will be. And we're going to use the combine function to do that since we are throwing uh, multiple types, uh, multiple classes into, into the function. So we have to look at the data and determine what the best and most reasonable way to do this is. So if we look at this, this is going to do it by the column, by the order you put it in, it's going to do, uh, it's going to assign this class to that column. 
So for the first one, we want a numeric because if you look back, the first column it's reading in is just number. And in reality, we could drop this once we read in the data. We don't this this call this ID column doesn't do much for us. So the next one is going to be a character column because that is the player's name. That's a unique value and we don't want that to be uh, a factor or anything else. So we want that to be a character. And the next one, factor, that's the team. These are the categories and we want this to be a category because there's multiple people on a team and we want to be able to analyze maybe the teams as they come in and the players on each team uh, with their respective categories or factors. And now we're going to call this rep means repeat and we're going to say basically repeat numeric for the next 90 columns and it doesn't really matter how many you put here as long as it covers the rest of these columns. So I didn't want to count how many there were so I simply just put 90 and I said that should be enough to cover the extent of that data. So let's go ahead and run that and see what comes back. So if we look at the head again it looks like it did before but let's go ahead and call structure and see what it looks like. All right, so this is looking like the what we were aiming for. So it changed the first one into numeric, the second one into character, third one into factors. So there's 30 different teams that are coming in, and the rest of them are numeric variables. And this is a lot better because now, with all these numeric variables, you can perform analysis a lot easier than when you could when they were factors. This is not helpful at all. So you want them in numeric uh, variables just to be able to analyze it better. So I hope that gives you good insight into the read HTML table function and that you can customize it and you can work with the data as it comes in. Now let's jump up down here and take a look at database connections. So depending on the type of database that you want to connect to, you'll have to look up and search for a specific package for each and they'll each have kind of their own little syntax rules the way they're done but they'll follow pretty much a, a similar path a similar uh, format to connecting to a database so in this case we're gonna connect with uh, well if we were connecting with it our MySQL part of the reason I chose MySQL is because it's more common on Mac and that's the computer I have so I'm going to create a variable called my database, my, my DB, and the first function you have to call is DB Connect. And this is basically you throwing a hook out there and trying to get authorization just to get access and uh, just to get access to that database. So let's go ahead and look at, oh, that's not there yet because I need to load the library. And I'm getting more errors, so this must mean that I need to install dot packages are my SQL. It's not found. So let's go over here to packages, install. Okay, so it found it here. I'm not sure why it didn't find it elsewhere, probably because I forgot these quotations here on my SQL. So now we have downloaded that and let's run library so that worked and now we have access to DB connect so connect to a database management system going through the authorization procedure so DB connect so this DRV is pretty much uh, it just defines what type of database that you're trying to connect to so you can click on some of those to try and find out more about it if you'd like now these are some other parameters that it needs. It needs the user and the password or an authorized user with its password to that specific database. So you have to make sure that on the database end of things that you've set it up to where you have access to a user with a proper password to get access there. And that's something that I don't cover in this video. And the DB name, the database name, 
you have to throw that in there. Again, this it deals with permissions because usually with databases, they have very specific permissions on who can access what. And you're going to have to say, okay, I want to access the host. So if I run that, um, it would connect me to the database. And if I wanted to get a list of database tables, I would just say DB list tables and toss in my database connection. And that should bring back a a list of all the tables and usually when you're connected with the database you'll want to pull back data you want to read in some data and so you have to query the database by saying DB send query and specify which connection you're sending that query to because theoretically you could have more connections in an R script um, than just to one database and then you'll do a typical SQL statement an SQL query to pull back uh, the data that you're looking for. So you do select all from some table and hopefully it brings back the desired information. And lastly, when you're done using the database, it's very important to close the database connection. Uh, it's best practice to do that for security reasons um, and for performance, uh, performance reasons. So again, this isn't too complicated, but you do have to make sure you have access to a database with a username and password that is authorized in that database. So I hope this helped answer some questions about HTML tables and database connections. Best of luck.